Hi, I'm Oliver, and I use he, they pronouns. I'm Nathan, I use he, him pronouns. I'm Oscar, I use he, him pronouns. Welcome to All Things LGBT+, Plus, Youth Edition. <laughs> uh, today is a trans-specific episode, and it is Monday, April 30th. All right, our first topic is coming out. Uh, um, so I think, <laughs> I think what we're going to do is maybe share individual experiences as well as um, tips for other trans kids watching this. All right. Oscar, do you want to go first? Sure. <laughs> um, so I have been out as trans for, I think, three and a half years, maybe. Maybe a little less. I'm not really sure. Somewhere in that area. Um, and originally, I didn't come out as trans. I just came out as gender nonconforming because I just didn't really know. Not to say that being gender nonconforming is just a transitional phase because there are people who come out and they're gender nonconforming and that's their gender and that's just, that's it. But for me personally, I just was trying to figure out where I stood and where I was along the gender spectrum. And so at first I didn't really change my name. I just kind of asked for different pronouns to be used for me occasionally. I didn't really specify if I wanted exclusively they, them. Um, so at first I just went by she, her, and they, them. And so nobody ever really did anything other than she, her, and my dead name. Okay, so my coming out experience was kind of generic for the trans experience, um, especially living in a liberal state. Um, my parents are cisgender heterosexual people who come from cisgender heterosexual people, so they didn't super understand what, what I was going through. Um, they. I had to educate them about pronouns and about gender because they had a very hard time understanding and because at first when I came out I was using exclusively they them pronouns and they didn't understand um, just the typical, but that's plural, They're, you're not more than one person, um, which isn't te technically the, grammat the grammatically correct definition of that pronoun. Um, but. I had to acknowledge that acknowledge that they needed to learn that, and so I had to had to talk to them about that, and they came around eventually. But they had they had a hard time with me wanting to change my name because I'm named after, well not now, but I was named after people, a person in my family, and so my mother kind of took it personally that I was changing my name, even though it wasn't personal. But she sort of took it personally at first, and so we had to talk through it before. Um, she let me change my name, and then it took um, a bit longer for her to let me change my name legally um, because she just, I guess, had to mourn that name, um, which sucked for me, but that's how cis people are. <laughs> um, and so, for, I mean, for the most part, my parents were pretty accepting. They wanted to, they wanted to learn, but because they were cis and come from cis, who also came from cis people, um, they didn't really have any exposure uh, because my dad's parents are very conservative and so they never would have let him be exposed to that. And my mom grew up in upstate New York, so she wouldn't have been exposed to that whether her parents would have allowed it or not. So um, they didn't really know where I was coming from. And they came around eventually and we no longer talked to my dad's parents uh, because I'm trans, um, they we came out to them, and there was a whole problem. And my because they quote don't agree with that lifestyle. It's not a lifestyle, and it also isn't something you can agree or disagree with it. With it's like hello, I am trans, and I am a human being. I don't agree with that lifestyle. That's that's not really a thing that you can say. Well, I guess you can, but it doesn't make any sense. Um, and so my immediate family was pretty accepting, but my extended family was and is still struggling. Um, at least my, my mom's parents make an effort. They call me Oscar. They use he, him pronouns. They mess up sometimes because they've known me for, they knew me for 13 years before I came out and changed my name as my dead name. And I don't, and I only ever see them like twice a year. So for what they're getting, they're doing a good job. But my dad's parents are not doing great. They make no effort whatsoever 
actively speak out against um, like organizations that would um, support me and my identity and actively support people who harm trans people. And my grandfather has never called me Oscar, ever. Um, and my grandmother has called me Oscar maybe twice um, and has never used my preferred pronouns for me. So we don't really talk to that side of the family anymore, which was hard because we grew up with them, obviously, but it was ultimately beneficial to me and my mental health to not talk to them anymore. Um, yeah, that's, that's about all I got. I don't want to be too long-winded, so that was, that was, that was it. Is it my turn? Yeah, I think so. All right, cool. Um, I have been out as trans for two years, I think. Two years in February. Um, and I was not one of those kids who like knew from the start that I was trans. I was always very much like, I, I was really uncomfortable for like the majority of my childhood and I didn't have a reason for it and I couldn't put a name to it until like I was older and I was like maybe it's because I'm not being feminine enough and then I was like when I get my period I'll finally feel comfortable in my body which was not true and then like when I go up a cup size I'll feel comfortable in my body or when I like cut my hair this way or get these certain clothes I'll feel comfortable in my body and it all just like culminated into being really, really uncomfortable for the majority of my life. And also like not being able to, because my brain doesn't like that, like I don't have a lot of memories of my childhood, which sucks. But um, I, uh, in eighth grade, shadowed someone at Montpelier High School because I wanted to go there and they had um, two trans friends and it was the first time I had met trans people my age and I'm still very close with both of them. Um, and I was like, oh, this is an option for me that I can have, like, people like me, like, people my age like this exist. And immediately my brain was like, oh, this is an issue that we have to think about and panic about for some time. And so I, like, unconsciously panicked about that for three months. And then I started high school, and I... Um, remember having a conversation with my friends like very early in the school year we were talking about gender and um, I was like yeah I'm I'm definitely a girl and I had like a physical disgust reaction to that um, and then like a week later I was like hey can you guys like use they them pronouns for me just for like a little bit to try it out and they were like okay sure um, and I ended up coming out first as like genderqueer and I would oscillate back and forth between like having girl days and boy days and both days and um, eventually the girl days just stopped happening um, and like I got increasingly like unhappy with the definition of being genderqueer and I um, got really really depressed and I like dropped out of school um, and I was out of school for probably three or four months because I was depressed and suicidal and then um, I got really suicidal, and then I went to this um, hospital diversion program for at-risk teens in Burlington. Um, and it, I decided I was going to use a different name. Um, and I uh, used a different name for the first time ever, and I was like, oh, this is right and correct. And so I only had to spend three days there for me to like automatically be super improved, and it was probably just because I changed my name. And so I came back and I was like, hey mom, I think I'm just a boy. And she was like, cool, keep me updated. Um, and then I got increasingly better and I changed my name and I was like, hey guys, I'm a boy. Um, and then I like went back to school and I was like, I'm a boy now. And everyone was like, okay. Um, and my family was, my parents were, fine about it and my mother is the best person in the entire world um, and has always been like super supportive and like my biggest advocate and like is probably the best person I know in the world 
Um, and my dad had like weird struggles with it where he was like, <laughs> um, like for a while after I transitioned, he was like, if you're not trying to be the most masculine version of yourself, why are you angry when people misgender you? And I was like, that's not fair and also mean. Um, <laughs> and other weird things like that, but like, in the past like three months actually, he's like gone through like this really like, I think it's hit him like how much, like how nuanced like this situation is and I am proud of him because he's awesome too. Um, and then like all, it took my, fa I think I was really lucky because my dad's side of the family, um, my cousin came out or was outed as gay before I ever came out as anything. And I think that like softened the blow of um, me being trans. And it definitely like wasn't easy. And there was a lot of like, because my cousin is super flamboyant, there was this experience where um, he came home with nail polish on and his dad was like, take that off. And they got into a big argument about it. And like his dad's final thing, like argument was, I don't want you to end up like Nathan. Um, and which is really bad and something I still think about. I don't even know if he remembers it, but like the majority of my family is super great now and like super awesome. And it's really a testament to like how far people can come. Um, and my mom's parents are really good about it. My, in the beginning, I like, went out to brunch with my grandma because she was like, I want to understand this, which is like a really noble thing to do. And um, like for a while they like were using my name and my pronouns, but it wasn't like, they weren't like trying enough. And so like I actually sat down and had a conversation with them where I'm like, you need to try harder. Um, and I think it, my grandpa like really got that and he really understood that. And my grandma like, is getting a lot better, but she does this thing where like she'll mis misgender me and my grandpa will call her out and then she'll be like, I feel like you should give me like a grandma pass on this or like a discount or something. And I'm like, no, absolutely not. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> and I think it's something like where she doesn't like want to feel guilty. Um, and I think it's really hard for people to feel guilty, but it's also something you probably should feel guilty about. So. Yep, I'm done now. Yeah, um, I've been out as trans for like five months, not very long. Um, I definitely didn't know for like, like up until like literally a few days before I came out, but um, and I never had any sort of like, like you talked about like being uncomfortable, I, like I never had any of that and I was like 100% sure. I even said a few times when people asked me like, like, what do you think about transgender people? I'd be like, oh yeah, they're great, but I'm definitely 100% cis. And um, yeah, so that was, um, I guess, unexpected to me. And I, I was never, like I was okay with me being trans, but it was weird for me to um, like think about that in like a whole new way relating to me, because suddenly I was like part of a group that I didn't, necessarily know a lot about and it happened in like a very short amount of time and then they came out in a hurry um, because I was starting um, a program at the State House um, in like a few days and I didn't want to start as a girl and then transition like halfway through that because um, it just would have been easier to start out the right way. So had a very hurried, like hurried coming out experience um, and I think my parents took it okay and they've just been learning um, more stuff and asking me more questions and like figuring things out and realizing um, what they need to be doing I guess to support me so yeah they're doing really really well um, at this point I've had some interesting reactions from friends uh, mostly supportive uh, had one very uneducated friend who is still pretty uneducated, but that's someone I'm trying to like work with to, um, so that she can like understand more what I'm going through and what she needs to know to support me and all of that. So yeah, I don't have a lot more to say besides that on that subject. Um, what like tips do you guys have for trans kids um, in terms of coming out and like how you can do that 
and make it go as smoothly as possible. Like, what would you think? I think it's hard for me to, like, conceptualize that mm -hmm. right now because I've, to me, it feels like I've been out for a long time and, um, which it really hasn't, it's, I, I haven't, but, um, I, the, the, like, activist in me wants to be, like, you're who you are and you don't, like, have to give people time and you don't have to, like, try to be understanding of people or, like, tolerate, like, the learning curve that cis people learn at, which is very slow. Um, <laughs> and, and, um, like, you don't have to be, like, palatable and acceptable for cis people, um, and you are who you are, and that should be outright accepted, but that, that's also, like, not how it works, yeah. which is tiring. Mm -hmm. um, and I think so much of what people tell you is, like, be understanding of people taking time. But also, like, you don't have to be understanding. Like, you can demand respect from people. Like, you have that right, and you, like, deserve that. Um, and if people don't understand, that's not their fault. That's on them. That's like that's not your fault. It's on them. Um, and the best thing you can do is like, as long as it's not like a impacting your own physical or mental safety, like be the most authentic version of yourself. Yeah, I don't know if I really have like the the um, experience to say how to make it go smoothly because mine was kind of messy <laughs> uh, yeah. because I didn't really come out to my parents. It was just kind of like gradual buildup of them finding out information about me. <laughs> there was never a moment where I said I'm trans to them. It was just kind of gradually me dropping hints and just kind of like Mood. <laughs> the, the buildup of them being like, oh, so this is what we should be doing. Uh, mm -hmm. And so then it kind of became common knowledge that I was trans, and it never really um, was a, a big moment where I just said, I'm trans. <laughs> it, it, and, like, trumpets play in the background. It, it wasn't, like, a <laughs> moment like that where you see in the movies. Um, the three movies about trans people. Yeah, <laughs> where they, they all die at the end. Yeah. Um, but I would definitely say that you, in this situation, you are the most important. Prioritize yourself and your comfort over the comfort of cis people who you're coming out to because cis people and people in general don't like their worldview challenged and that's part of being a human being. And so, by especially if the person you're coming out to doesn't have any experience with trans people, they're gonna be confused at first. They're gonna have a lot of questions, but you, do, but you are not obligated to, to answer anything that you're not comfortable with. Google is free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it costs somebody, zero dollars. Zero dollars and zero cents. And it co is, takes no time to open Google. But so A click, yep. even. If, if somebody asks you a question and you're comfortable with answering it, by all means. Mm -hmm. But if, it's, if you're starting to feel like it's becoming exhausting, if engaging with people's questions is exhausting and it's tiring and it's hurting you mentally or physically, um, prioritize yourself. You're more important than cis people who are uneducated. Your job as a trans person isn't to be a walking, talking encyclopedia. You do not have to take on the role of educating mm -hmm. everyone around you. Google is free. There are resources out there. And you shouldn't be bombarded with questions that you're not comfortable with. And I think initially it's going to feel like you want to answer everyone's questions because you're so excited to like share this like authentic you with people and then and it creeps up on you how exhausting it gets like because like weeks after you've come out and you're still answering these questions from people and like people are still unloading how they feel about your transition <laughs> onto you it's like we're not your therapists like we don't care how you feel <laughs> in this situation because it's not about you it's about us um, and so be, be aware of like how you're feeling because that exhaustion can creep up on you really really like slowly and quietly and it's like really hard to get out of that like educator situation once you've got into it mm -hmm. yeah I think it's um, definitely important to know that like other people's emotions in this situation really don't matter at all and that when you come out to someone it's like you shouldn't feel like 
oh my gosh, I've like ruined this person's life and caused them a bunch of stress because like that's their fault. And like I've had experiences where I come out to someone and then um, they ask me a bunch of like very offensive questions or say a bunch of transphobic um, things, whether they realize it or not. And then uh, when I get mad at them and try to educate them, go on like a rant of all their excuses about like, oh, I've been really like stressed out for the past month about all these things. Like, I don't care. <laughs> and I don't need to know. So I think it's important that, um, yeah, you don't need to listen to people when they talk about that. And it's okay to just, like, be very frank with them and just tell them, like, I don't need to know. And to um, make sure they know what they need to be doing to support you. Since people get so scared of like, the stereotype about trans people that they're going to get so mad when you make a mistake. And, like, trans people feel like they have to, like, be overly accepting and overly apologetic to people because of that stereotype. You're allowed to fulfill that stereotype. <laughs> You're allowed yeah. to be like, that's messed up. Please stop. <laughs> You're you allowed need to... to be the aggressive trans person yeah. that everyone seems to think we are. Yeah. Yeah. Don't feel sorry for the cis people who are scared of asking questions. Like, you can yell at them if they're being stupid. That's fine. <laughs> Once again, Google is free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, it takes nothing to Google a question you have because I promise there are resources out there that aren't the 13-year-old trans kid that lives in your house who probably <laughs> might, who might not even know. Right. Yep. Being yeah. trans doesn't make you an authority on, like, trans activism or yeah, yeah. just stuff like that. Yeah, so you definitely individual as, experiences are very you don't different. You come out as trans and then immediately the fairy blesses you with all the knowledge of trans history that has ever happened. You wake up one day and you're like, Sylvia Rivera. <laughs> <laughs> and you just know everything. That's not how it works. So don't, don't, take, don't take stuff from cis people who are trying to be invasive and ask questions that you aren't comfortable with and who are unloading their feelings and thoughts and emotions on you. Like they, they misgender you and you correct them and they say, oh, it's so hard for me to, I'm going through a Here's lot, all the, this is really affecting me. Here's all the reasons that I misgendered you, like other than the fact that I just messed up and I'm not gonna apologize for that, I'm just gonna apologize for all these other reasons that I didn't actually misgender you, I just like, these are all the other reasons. <laughs> yeah, people need to learn that misgendering is something that's like, it's not, like it's, it's very, Simple. If you misgender someone, you apologize quickly without unloading all your emotions or giving any sort of or excuse. Or even like not even apologizing, just like correcting like, yourself. Yeah, you, like, yeah. you don't even have to say on. anything. <laughs> just like say the right thing and then continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, next thing we're going to talk about is uh, sort of two things like medical transition and also um, dysphoria and. Before we start talking about this, I do want to note that, like, this is a special, like, occasion for talking about this subject, so you can't just, like, walk up to a trans person and be like, hey, what's your medical history? Um, so, yeah, this is, like, a, um, yeah, this is an occasion where we are talking about this, but that doesn't make it okay for you to, like, bring it up in conversation with you your trans You shouldn't ask friend. about someone's medical history yeah. unless they bring it up yeah. to you. So I definitely just don't want to like note that um, so people don't take this the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And also our experiences with being trans and well, wanting to medically transition or medically transitioning aren't, believe it or not, the authority on what all trans people want or, and need. So yeah. just that, because yeah. one of us or all of us want something or need something doesn't mean that every trans person does. Mm -hmm. Um, there are trans people who don't want to, like, f transition at all and want to, like, present, like, still as the gender they were assigned at birth. There are trans people who don't want to medically transition. There are trans people who want to fully medically transition. Um, it's, there, are, there is no universal trans experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So on that note, um, do you guys both want to share whatever your comfortable sharing about like medical transition in general or your personal experience or Nathan why don't you start because you are the most I'm the most complicated <laughs> yeah the most highly evolved um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I have had um, top surgery which is technically called a double incision mastectomy 
which it's not really a mastectomy because in regular mastectomies they like don't pay as much attention to like aesthetic and also they don't take like fat as well as like actual mammary glands and so I have two big scars that go like this um, and that was almost six months ago um, and I have also been on testosterone for a year and a month and a half and that is why my voice sounds normal um, <laughs> and uh, causes a bunch of other things to happen. And that's really like all I want for my medical transition. Like I, like after I got top surgery, like my dysphoria was virtually gone and like is to this day and like not really existent anymore. I also have a theory that like is a controversial theory that dysphoria is um, pretty much solely based in like societal expectations of what it means to be physically or like mentally um, a man or a woman or neither um but i'm i'm pretty content in my own medical transition at this point like i i have gotten all that i have needed from it um i'm not really super medically transitioned i've been on um uh, uh estrogen blockers um for it was a year on like the 10th i think of this month, it was a year, um, and I am less than a month away from starting testosterone. My appointment to get a prescription is in mid-May, so I think, I think it's on May 15th, and so then it's just going to depend on a bunch of other stuff when I'm actually going to start. Be able to shoot up. Yep. <laughs> um, as far as things that I would like for my medical transition, I kind of, I don't really want anything other than just testosterone and, a, and, a, and top surgery. I don't have a lot of bottom dysphoria. Um, I'm, if, if it really comes down to it, I might get a hysterectomy because mm. being on testosterone and having a uterus can, it, that can bad. do bad stuff to your body. <laughs> um, you don't need to have a, a hysterectomy, but I have, um, a bad family history as far as body chemistry, and so I'm not going to take the chance. Um, but, yeah, I don't really feel like I need bottom surgery. I like the idea of it, but it, frankly, it scares me too much to actually go through with it, and it seems like the, the consequences would far outweigh the benefits for me because it's so much healing time, and it's so much, um, and it's so different from what you you know, um, that I feel like it wouldn't be something that would be incredibly helpful for me, so. And there's a lot of people who, like, feel very much the opposite and feel like it's worth and feel yeah. like it's, like, oh, yeah, for sure. good enough that it, like, is yeah. something that they want and that they need. Yeah, like, there are trans just... people who need bottom surgery to feel okay in their body. Yeah. And th that is completely a valid way to tran, TM. <laughs> Because, as we mentioned earlier, there is no right way or universal way to be trans. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think a lot of, like, everyone has different experiences, definitely. And there's also, um, like, different people have different dysphoria levels or no dysphoria at all. And you can get, like, whatever. You can transition however you want, regardless of dysphoria mm -hmm. as well. And, um... Yeah, I think some people like are not like I'm not interested really in passing as male, partly because I'm not male. Like I'm non-binary, so that definitely has something to do with it. Because um, I don't I don't want to I'm I don't want to pass as female because I'm not female, but I'm also not male. So um, I think part of my like medical journey is probably just going to be finding out like what I can do to sort of. Um, be somewhere in the middle and like uh, I've heard of non-binary people who take like a small amount of testosterone and then that sort of like it doesn't have as big an effect mm -hmm. so you're so like I wouldn't completely pass as male or um, like be completely like with all the effects of T um, normally but I would still like sound different and feel different mm -hmm. um, so that's something 
um, that I'm kind of interested in in the future. Uh, I'm not allowed to take hormone blockers for some reasons, but um, yeah, so pretty much for me, I'm just like waiting two and a half years <laughs> until I can actually do anything. Yeah, but, and yeah. we also can't speak to the experiences of like trans women either, like Definitely. at all. And yeah. this is a very like, a panel S of... Small, com small <laughs> representation of the trans community. Yeah. It's three white trans mask people. Yeah. We're probably the most privileged kind of trans yeah, person that you can sure. get. <laughs> for sure. Like, like, not probably. We are. We are. Yeah. We are the the most privileged. Like, it's just like with anything. There's levels of privilege that you get at, when you're trans. When, just like when you're anything, um, being a person of, like a black trans woman, that is probably the least privileged type of trans person. The life expectancy for trans women of color is like thirty two. Yeah, which is and the horrible. the murder rate of trans women specifically far outweighs the murder rate of trans people in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially trans women of color. Yeah, which is a huge issue, and it wouldn't be right for any of us to assume or talk about the experiences of um, assigned male at birth people who identify as trans. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a good thing to mention because that's. A whole different um, topic, really, that uh, we can't address, and that it would be cool in the future for us to maybe like get someone on here who can talk about that. But um, so that's something um, maybe we can do. I'm not sure, but um, <laughs> yeah. So another thing I want to talk about is a question I get asked a lot: is does your sexuality change when you transition? Which is um, yeah, I think we just That's like want to clarify that. <laughs> That's complicated because the answer is no, because sexuality is also like biological and genetic the way that like gender is. But at the same time, the way that I f view sexuality is like my own sexuality is like really, really fluid. Mm -hmm. And it actually like dramatically changed when I started tea, I, which is like not definitely not like a universal experience. Um, That's interesting. Yeah, but um, and probably just has to do with like the way my sexuality is set up in general, just like being really fluid all the time. But um, it's definitely not a universal experience, and most likely, you no, know, your sexuality doesn't change when mm -hmm. you're. Yeah, I mean your um, your label can definitely change if you're um, like if you're a trans guy, and. So you're assigned female at birth, and like, while you identify as female, or while you're like labeled as female, you're straight, or you consider yourself straight, and then when you transition, then you're gay. So your label does change sometimes, but, but the, um, the actual yeah. sexuality, like that part, doesn't change. Who you're attracted to doesn't change, even though your label might. So that's confusing to some people, but mm -hmm. definitely something that's, yeah. And also, as you mentioned, it's very fluid, so you can like use different labels at different times, and it can change and go back and forth, mm -hmm. or it can stay the same. For some people, I guess it just like always is exactly the same, but mm -hmm. it's flexible. I I had a very confusing experience and um, relationship with sexuality because when I was before I came out as trans, I identified as a lesbian, and I'm not sure if that was me rejecting the part of myself that was trans or if that was me saying I can't be trans but I if I identify as a lesbian I can be masculine which isn't which obviously mm -hmm. isn't the truth and is it and you can be masculine or feminine no matter what I had a very similar experience but my but I don't and I don't know if that was like a, a way for me to express my masculinity without admitting to myself that I was trans or if that was me completely trying to suppress the male part of myself and just be like, I don't want anything to do with men in general. <laughs> and so I don't know I don't know what that is, but now and now that I've transitioned, I identify as I don't know, like my sexuality is super fluid. Um I'm currently in a relationship with a person who identifies as male. Um so um at this point I would I just say that I'm gay because explaining my sexuality to straight people is a nightmare. <laughs> Yep. Um, Straight people are a nightmare. That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just say that I'm gay because it's a lot easier, but that really isn't the case. Because if you want to be super specific, um, 
Uh, I guess the, the word that I like for myself is um, androsexual, which is you just like masculinity. So ba kind of just regardless of the person's gender identity, I, in, I am more attracted to people that are um, masculine. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, is there anything else you guys want to cover or any additional comments, advice, anything? Did you, didn't you say you wanted to talk about dysphoria? Oh, yeah. That's something we didn't talk about, really. But, yeah. Um, Should we define dysphoria? Yeah. That's definitely <laughs> something <laughs> that... For the cis. For the cis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's something that I find a lot of people actually have like, have never even heard of or and don't then, understand. And then but, we should probably yeah. address the question, do you need dysphoria to be trans? Uh, um, yeah, that's a question. <laughs> um, dysphoria is defined as the, like, physical or mental pain that, m more often mental pain that um, some trans people feel um, because of the disconnect uh, between, like, the gender that they are and their body. And there are a lot of trans people who um, don't experience dysphoria, and that's cool and awesome. And I count as one of them now. And what I really would say, like, ha like the definition of being trans isn't you have dysphoria, it's gender euphoria. I love that definition. It's you don't be, like, for instance, someone who is trans mask. You don't feel terrible when you're called with female pronouns, but you feel a hell of a lot better. Sorry, am I allowed, am I allowed to say it? Okay. Um, when you're addressed as male. So, like, that's gender use euphoria, and you're trans. That's, that's how it is. If you, feel, if you feel better being addressed by pronouns other than the ones that were assigned to you, you're trans. Um, well, I mean, there's also, like, yeah. people who, like, use different pronouns and th that feel, yeah. like, really good for them, but also, like, still, there's a lot of, like, um, People who, like who identify as women who use he him pronouns, um, but still like identify as women, but feel more comfortable with those pronouns because pronouns, well, unfortunately in our society are asso associated with gender don't have to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. and language is fake, so you can use whatever <laughs> pronouns you want yeah. and be, be, identify as whatever gender you want, because we made up gender, we made up the concept of that. We made up the concept of sexuality, and we made up the concept of language. So you can everything's fake. You can be and do whatever you want because at the end of the day, we're all gonna die. Everything. <laughs> so do what makes you happy while you're alive. <laughs> wow. Okay. Like if transitioning makes you feel good, transition. If using pronouns other than what so what society says you should use them because mm -hmm. you can. Life is short. Yeah. And yep. Pronouns are fun. Yeah, I think it's, it's uh, there's also trans people, like a lot of trans people um, who like don't care about pronouns yeah. at all or who are pronoun indifferent or non-binary people who use their assigned pronouns just because it's convenient. Mm -hmm. um, and Everything's fake, yeah. dude. Just yeah. ask people. <laughs> yeah, like just, just be like, hey, hey, what pronouns do you want me to use? What name do you want me to use? And then just do it. It's not hard. Yeah, it's it not isn't hard at difficult. All. If you can memorize your multiplication tables, you can you can remember somebody's pronouns. It's it, it's yeah not hard. You're just being difficult for no reason. <laughs> yeah, my mom has this saying that um, <laughs> you don't have to understand. You just have to not be a dick. <laughs> That's um, effective. And I I I try to live by that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think um. You also, like, you don't, I think a lot of cis people take it very, like, personally or um, emotionally when you tell them, like, your new pronouns or whatever, but it really doesn't have to be a big deal at all, and But also if you, if you want it to be yeah, a big deal, then yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, if you want to, like, yeah. like kill it. scream it <laughs> and, yeah, make it a huge thing, you can, but if you just want to, like, mention, hey, I'm using these pronouns now, and people should just, like, go with it and not ask you stuff unless you bring up topics to talk about, um, mm -hmm. which is just a general rule, but. Yeah. Like you deserve yeah. to have your name spoken like as you want it to be because names are just sounds that you like. And so if you like a sound better than another one, you deserve <laughs> to have that sound used for you. Just like the sounds of pronouns. If you like the sound of one pronoun better than the other one, you're, you deserve to have that. And you deserve to be respected as a human being. and someone 
claiming that they're going to use your the wrong pronouns for you just because they don't like you is not just mm -hmm. because being called the right pronouns and the right name isn't a privilege for for good trans people um for tra basically for tr trans people who are palatable to cis people that isn't it's just a basic human right yeah it's a base <laughs> like if i was in a fight with a cis person i wouldn't start calling them she if they were a cis male i wouldn't do that ba like i really don't like caitlin jenner but i would never misgender her because yeah. she's a woman so yeah. like like and cis people, when you say that, are just like, what? Like, <laughs> no, I think Caitlyn Jenner is a terrible um, representation of the trans community, and I really don't like her, but I would never call her her dead name or call her with male pronouns because she is a woman, and it's basic human decency to, to respect that. Mm -hmm. And it isn't, like, a right that you have to earn to be called the right name and pronouns. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is something that should be expected and that... Um, if people mess up, don't feel bad about correcting them. Yeah. Obviously, and, obviously, if it's safe for you to do that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't feel bad about correcting people. Yeah, and they, you shouldn't feel, like, indebted to a person because they're using the right pronouns, even yeah. though they're mad at you. Like, if you're in a fight with someone, or it's someone who you really hate and they're being awful to you, like, just because they use the right pronouns doesn't mean um, they're being any less of a jerk. Like, you could still yeah. yell back at them. You don't have to... Um, pretend that oh well they didn't misgender me so like it's fine <laughs> it's not the worst <laughs> that could happen <laughs> yeah so that too like it's not something that and also cis people shouldn't ever like use that as um, like guilt trip a trans mm. person by being like well I've never misgendered you so because that's just I haven't misgendered no. you this week so like I deserve an award yeah <laughs> it's cool you want like a sticker or something <laughs> like <laughs> Like, the dream trans person for cis people is, like, you have, like, a bag of, like, hard candies, and every time they get, like, it's, it's like a dog. Like, you shake it for, like, like, you shake for a dog. And every time they give you, you they use the right pronoun, you just give them a hard candy. Mm -hmm. And, like, you're readily available to answer any question about trans history that they have or any question about your own medical history, because obviously you're entitled to that, to just know a random person's medical history and know what a random person's genitals look like. So, ob obviously, that's your right as a cis person. <laughs> yeah. That was sarcasm. <laughs> Just to <laughs> clarify. Because I know some people struggle with it. That was sarcasm. Um, I think it can be really hard, like dangerous too, to like start talking about pronouns and like gender as like a want yeah. too. Because yeah. some people like it's not like an it's not like I identify as something. It's like I am this. Yeah. And they're like, I choose to like identify like identify as a trans man and not just a man, because I I like trans as a political identity and like a way to like um like feel powerful in the world because i think being trans is like beautiful and complicated and but there are a lot of trans people who just identify as like men or women and like don't need that to like be a part of their identity mm -hmm. yeah it's fine to want to pass as cis or like you don't have to feel as if you would just ever because... want to be cis though <laughs> And that's another thing. Not all trans people want to be cis. Yeah. Ooh, because apparently that's a mis that's something that cis people think that's is that ridiculous. Yeah. They, they, like as soon as someone comes out, they want to be cis. That isn't that isn't true. And like obviously some people, some trans people who are stealth, they're just I just want to be perceived as a man, and that's it. That's my life. But there are trans people, myself included, who are like I'm not cis. I don't want to be cis. Yeah. Please don't ever think that I'm cis. I don't yeah. want to be perceived as cis, and I have privilege in that. I have privilege that I don't have to be stealth, that I can live in my community and say, I am a trans man, and just be proud of mm -hmm. that fact. Um, and not everybody has that. But because I do, I am going to do my best to use that to the advantage of uh, other people in the trans community yeah. who, who don't have that. Yeah. Those of us who have the ability to say things that make people uncomfortable... Like, at least I feel a responsibility to keep on doing that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think it's also, like, if you're a trans person and you, like, wish you were cis or your goal is to pass as cis, that's fine, too. Yeah. And if you, like, if you're, if you think of being trans as, like, an irrelevant detail in your life, that's fine, um, as long as you understand that, like, other people are proud of the fact they're trans and that that's something that's, like, um, important and an empowering label for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And also that maybe that feeling, like acknowledging that maybe that feeling comes from a place of like internalized transphobia. Definitely. And like, like the need to be cis is like 
something that comes from internalized dysphobia. Yeah. All right. I think yeah. that's that's probably everything. Yeah. Unless you have any more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, everybody. This has been All Things LGBTQ, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>